you very much for joining this uh, CIM webinar on Aspire to be a Senior Marketer. Hopefully, um, I'm going to be able to give you some, some good information to help you um, decide whether the proposition that the CIM have, i.e. the Marketing Leadership Programme, is the right one for you um, to help you achieve your career aspirations. So, very quickly, a little bit about me. Um, my name is Martin Hutchins. I am the Managing Director and the Founder of Professional Academy. Um, I'm also a CIM tutor and um, I've also studied the CIM program myself right from the um, certificate level up to the postgraduate diploma level and uh, we've been obviously a study centre since 2002. So quite a lot of experience and we're quite fortunate that we are one of the small number of accredited study centres that are permitted to deliver the marketing leadership program and it's obviously because of that that the CIM have asked me to, to make this presentation. So before we start, I just want to get a bit of feel for the people that uh, have logged on. Um, if um, Hopefully the polls will, will kick in, but um, we'd like to ask you some questions about your studying, or, or if you're thinking about studying, for example, the, um, the, 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 the program, so at which level. And uh, the survey should be coming up on your screen. There we go. I think the screen is uh, is live, so just looking to see who's clicking on it now. At the moment, nobody's clicked on it, but I am going to wait and hopefully see somebody to to click on it. We're having to to manage this uh, this aspect of the presentation remotely, so I'm relying upon uh, somebody else to to click the button. Okay, so the first poll has gone live, and I can see that yeah, we've got a few people that have clicked in. Um, so if you're thinking about studying or, or um, are you currently studying, roughly 50-50, that's quite interesting, roughly 50-50 um, in terms of people that are um, thinking about studying. That's good to know. Okay, so how about the next question? Let's look at the next question. If you're currently working, just understand if you're working in marketing and um, obviously the positions and the stage of studying. So can we uh, have that next poll live, please? If you're currently working in marketing, I'm just watching to see some results coming. This is quite clever, this technology. I quite like it. So, who's currently working in marketing? Okay, the results aren't coming through. I'm not sure whether there was a glitch or whether people aren't clicking on the button. Aha, here we go. Everybody's in marketing. Perfect. I thought for a minute I was, going to be, I was talking to a pottery uh, class. That's really good to hear. Okay, great stuff. Um, so 100% people working in marketing. And uh, if we can have the, uh, the next question, please. I'm just waiting to see whether there's any more questions coming in. Oh, okay, so for the moment, we, this is the, survey, the only survey we've got. We do The other survey um, will be done at the end. So I'm going to flick back over now to the slides. That's really good. And let me uh, move on to the next slide. So let's get into it. So what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about a level-by-level -level overview just to see where the, the, um, the, the Marketing Leadership Programme fits in in the context of the other qualifications. And I'm also going to just touch on really why people might want to choose these CIM qualification as opposed to a degree or a master's degree because they are quite different and quite often we get asked um, some advice, if you like, on which way to go. Got some um, comments to give to you about the different types of study methods that are available. There are, you know, as I say, there are a few study centres that can offer this. We're not the only ones. I don't want to monopolise the market. So, um, talk about the various study methods that you might want to consider. Um, whether or not you have the right um, entry level criteria for this program, um, and things about what you should ask your possible study centre in order to make sure you get the best out of the program. So that's really what we're going to cover. But obviously the main thing we're going to look at is what does this qualification look like? So first of all, really, this is to set the context. The program, um, the CIM program at the, uh, for the marketing leadership program is the top level. It is the final level and it's really what all marketers and senior marketers certainly should be aspiring to achieve, the level seven. 
Um, precursors to that are the foundation level, the level three, which is predominantly for people who have not really had any experience of marketing or a, a small amount of experience, but they're not working in a 100% marketing role. So perhaps if you're a, you know, a PA or if you're a salesperson looking to understand a, bit, a little bit more about marketing. The main entry point, the, the, the first port of call really for most of our, our students are those that enter in at the level four, the certificate in professional marketing. It's for people that work in marketing already, um, or have got a degree, or have got a year's, you know, a year's experience in marketing. From that, people either can progress onto the level six, or they can sometimes enter straight in at the level six, the diploma in professional marketing. Um, that's really for people that have got a marketing responsibility as a manager, operational manager. A couple of years experience there, you understand the strategic nature of marketing and really the focus of the diploma is about the strategic nature and uh, not so much about the tactical. So it's, it's either assume that you've got knowledge of the tactical areas through your job or alternatively you've studied the level four and therefore um, know the contents of the level four. And then the, the top of the tree, the marketing leadership program, the level seven. Um, anybody that's got the level six could obviously progress onto that or a master's degree or have got some significant experience in marketing, either a senior manager or as a director. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on. So you can see there that the, the level seven is really the highest level. There is a previous qualification that the marketing leadership superseded, certainly in the UK, and it's the postgraduate diploma level seven. It's now only available to the international market. And the reason for that is the, the mode of study for the marketing leadership program is very much a one-to-one -one relationship between yourself as the learner and the, um, the organizer, sorry, the, the study center and the trainers that you've got from the study center. You can't really achieve the level seven if you haven't got that one-to-one -one interaction. Um, and at and the international level, we have decided that you know, the, the, um, the original postgraduate diploma should be kept due to the potential lack of that degree of high expertise that you would need from your trainer. I'm sure that most of you know this, but the, um, the CIM and the, and the CIM qualifications are the standard for marketing across the world. It's the biggest marketing um, awarding body in the world, um, has the best brand reputation, and if I tell you that I spend a lot of my time personally traveling around the Middle East, um, Africa, the Far East, the one qualification that everybody mentions to me wherever I go is the CIM. It's, it's always talked about. So if you're looking to bolster your CV or if you're looking to perhaps um, work abroad, this is definitely, definitely the, the, the program and the qualification to have on your CV. It's going to open far more doors than any other marketing qualification that, uh, that exists. I can't really be any more blunt than that, actually. So let's just, just consider whether or not the a CIM qualification is right or whether a degree or a master's degree is more appropriate for you. Well, obviously, I've said to you that the, the CIM is more recognized globally, but it's also the qualification that's most frequently asked for in, in job vacancies and adverts for, by recruiters and also by organizations. And it is actually recognized, and this is hard facts surveys, um, by 95% of the UK employers and many, many worldwide, certainly global companies. If you wish to work for a global company, this would be the qualification they would be looking for. Um, and also it allows you the promotion um, within your own organizations because of the enhanced skills and knowledge that you gain by going through the program. Uh, the, uh, we have countless testimonials of people that have come back to us and said, you know, do you know what, because of this qualification, I've now been promoted to a senior manager or I've been promoted to, you know, to be a brand manager or something like that. We are very often told the effect and the impact that this qualification has had. So it's more than a degree in that respect. Also research from the CIM. You know, we all like to, to know the hard facts here, 10% more pay on average if you hold a CIM qualification than somebody that doesn't hold a CIM qualification. So that in itself shows the return on investment. And lastly, just to really think about what you prefer to do in terms of uh, study and how, you, how, you, how your brain works, a degree is very much a theoretical. You're, you'll be taught lots of theories, lots of facts, lots of models, even given lots of case studies. And the assessment for that is the application of that theory, um, but in an academic environment. 
Whereas with the CIM, it's all about practical application of what you've learned. So for example, I'm going to talk about the leadership program in a minute. Every single piece of work that you produce in order to be assessed is something that you've applied at work and how you've evaluated an organization and how you've looked at the impact of an organization is 100% application of the knowledge. And that alone is worth its weight in gold because most of the qualification assessments can actually be deployed within your company once you've completed them. You know, many of the projects are taken back to the management and then they are implemented post um, writing them as an assessment. So great quote from Liz Hopkins, director of uh, Michael Page. It seems that the CIM qualification is held in high regard with people and the ultimate summation seems to be that work experience is extremely important to clients but a solid qualification to back this up um, adds weight to any application. So that just says, yes, you need the experience, yes, you need a qualification, but the, the combination of a qualification that applies the knowledge in the workplace is the, is, yeah, is the best way to go. And obviously Michael Page being one of the biggest recruitment companies, and certainly in marketing they are. So what about this marketing leadership program? Um, it's one that's been accredited by the CR. I am obviously 65,000 members. Um, they do set the standards in the UK. They really do. And the CIM uh, Marketing Leadership Program was developed as a result of quite a lot of research. A few years ago, we were looking at the the original postgraduate diploma, and we went to the marketplace and went to employers, went to a number of past students, and asked them what they wanted from a top of the tree, top level program, and also also how did they feel this should differ from the master's degrees that were on the market as well? What, what could this add that perhaps a master's degree couldn't give the individuals that were taking it? So it's, it's based on solid research. It's not something that, that you know, various academics have put together. This is what the marketplace wanted um, to ensure that you succeed as a top level marketer to uh, uh, be allowed access onto it. And what I will say, this is down to the discretion of the study center. You don't have to go to the CIM to ask for access on this. You have to talk to your study center who will ask you the, the appropriate questions and it is up to them to decide whether you would be appropriate for this level of program or whether it might be better for you to join at a lower level, perhaps to level six. So please don't you know, feel that um, you've got to come in at this level. One comment I often make when we speak to people about their entry level is, yes, it's great to, you know, to, to enter at a higher level, but if you enter at too high a level and you find it too challenging, then actually you, you end up being dissatisfied and probably Oh. Hello? Hi, it seems that we've lost a presenter. Hello, Martin? Hello, Martin, are you there?
Hello, Martin. Are you there? Yeah, hello, everybody. Sorry, it looks like my internet connection has dropped. Um, I'm back online now. Is that okay to continue? I'm not sure which slide did uh, my my um, presentation my, my line drop on. Slide nine. Slide nine. Okay, good. So I was talking. Can it, can everybody? It's okay to carry on talking. Yes, you can all hear me now. I'm hoping so. Good. Okay. So yes, I was talking about the um, the entry criteria for the level uh, the marketing leadership program. Firstly, it could be the level six qualification or a, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in marketing, um, or if your experience and career to date can demonstrate that you have been working at a senior level in marketing. That's very important, as I said earlier, because the, uh, the material that you're going to be studying is quite challenging and you need to have experience of the, the models and the marketing environment. Okay, let's move on. So who's it for? Um, really senior managers or even marketing directors. You know, it's quite important that uh, we recognize that some of these marketing directors have moved to that level in their career without any formal qualifications. And it's, it's, uh, it's quite nice to both refresh their knowledge of some of the models and theories, but also show how they can perhaps look at the, um, the qualification and, and the way that they do, they apply it in their job slightly differently. And the other really interesting aspect of this program, and it's something that um, I was quite excited about when we first heard about the new program, and that is consultants. There isn't really anything else out there which is a qualification that can be given to marketing consultants and be used by them as part of their reputation building when they are talking to their clients or potential clients. And one of the modules actually within this program is specifically and uniquely for marketing consultants, and that's really exciting. It actually gives a stamp of approval to consultants in a quite a crowded marketplace, if I'm honest with you, and it does allow these consultants to be elevated above all other consultants in the, in the marketing arena. So what are the modules? There are four modules. Um, individuals need to take three. So there's two mandatory, and there's a further two where you can choose one or the other. So the four modules are called Contemporary Challenges, leading change, consultancy, and managing business growth. So let's talk about the, the two uh, mandatory units first of all. First one is called contemporary challenges, and that's really about looking at what is happening in the external environment that is going to strategically impact your organization. So you're, you're really sort of preparing for the future. You're looking at potential things like um, Brexit, you know, very topical at the moment. Brexit is, um, is something we all sort of hear so much of, but it could also be technological changes. Well, what is happening in the technology arena? Or maybe your supply chain is changing. So you're, you're having to look at this external environment, understand that, and then make some recommendations as to a course of action to adapt to those challenges and changes. And then the leading change flips that and says, okay, so... How do we then apply this internally? So what, what do we need to do to change our organization in order to respond to those external environmental changes? What do we need to do within our organization in terms of resource change? Perhaps have we got the right competencies and capabilities that we need for this future um, scenario? And then obviously what do we need to do to make sure that our proposed change is effectively and efficiently implemented within our organization. So that's taking the external environment from the previous module, the contemporary challenges, and applying it internally and leading that organizational change. So they're the two mandatory units. And then the two electives, and only one of them needs to be studied. Um, one of them is called managing business growth and the other one is consultancy. So the managing business growth then asks you to look at, and a very exciting area actually asks you to look at what could you do or how can you identify something that is going to positively impact the future revenue or profitability or strategic objectives of your organization? In actual fact, what you need to do is to look for three and then choose one of them. So you, you're going to be looking at the, the, the possible opportunities and then you're going to be evaluating each of those and then making some recommendations how one of those new opportunities can be effectively implemented. 
And the fourth alternative, alternative to the managing business growth is predominantly for people that are in the consultancy field, and that is all about building um, your, your network, building your relationships, understanding the importance of relationships, and then working on an actual project for a client or a fictitious project for a client, if you like. So you'll be looking at the project management aspect of being a consultant. So again, as I said, it's probably the only consultancy project as uh, for consultancy qualification for marketers. So just to show that pictorially, we've got it at the bottom here. Contemporary challenges plus leading change and either consultancy or managing business growth. Roughly speaking, and this shows the, you know, the, the, um, the nature of each of the modules, roughly speaking, they take about six months to complete. Um, so therefore, if you're doing three modules, you're looking at 18 months, possibly two, two years. Um, there are some people that work on it quicker, but when you consider the fact that each of these modules has to be um, assessed with a 5,000 word business report, you can see that writing 5,000 words, including all of the research and, in, and including all of the analysis, is not something that, that should be taken lightly. I think at this point it's really important to mention as well that, that this is not a theoretical, read a textbook, regurgitate the knowledge in an assessment and then submit it for marking. This is about you developing something very unique for you and your organization. And you are coached, and that's the key word really, you're coached by your tutor from the study center to ensure that what you produce is of the highest standard. So it's that one-to-one -one coaching that is the main thrust of the way that you're taught in this program. And that's the reason why this is only available in the UK at the moment. Okay, so um, let's, let's talk about the uh, assessments. So the assessments, and, and you know, it's quite interesting actually if you understand how these are assessed or, and what's in it because it shows you the sorts of things that you're going to learn. So let's talk about the first one, the contemporary challenges. The assessment there is about responding to an external macro or micro challenge that exists in your, um, in your competitive environment. And very importantly, how can you ensure strategic sustainability of your recommendation. So it's a sustainability that you have to focus on. So task one is about an audit, you're doing an external audit, you're going to use the traditional models and tools that you would have learned either through your experience or previous levels of study. You're going to look at the key drivers of organizational success and understand you know, how they might impact upon things like competitive positioning or supply chain or technology or a Brexit change. So you're going to research and have some solid foundations to the challenge that you're facing. And then for task two, you're writing a briefing paper to your senior management with possible courses of action to um, respond to that challenge. You're not making a recommendation at this point, you're making a presentation so that the senior management team can all consider as a group how it could go forward. So you'll be looking at things like the resources you have available, the risk that perhaps this um, uh, exposes to you, and, and maybe other elements of change as well that would need to be considered. And then finally, task three is the strategy to respond. So you're going to write a strategy about how you would respond to that future challenge that you have identified. It's a bit like crystal ball gazing and then building a plan for what you think is going to happen in the future. Very exciting and very um, fulfilling as well, module to, to, to study. And as I said, the second one then takes that, the leading change module, the assessment, takes that from your internal perspective. So you're looking at your own organization and you are putting forward an argument for change. You're going to consider things like the culture of your organization, the structure, um, and what, it, what needs to be done to effectively implement your proposal of change. So task one, you're going to look at the range of changes that, um, that, that you could implement to enhance customer value or maybe enhance organizational value. So you're looking at a number of changes before you hone in on one specific change to execute. Then you gather supporting data to justify um, your recommendations, evaluate what drivers of change are existing externally, and also look at the financial and marketing um, 
issues related to that change as well. So task one is really about looking at what the change is and making sure that it's a relevant change within your organization that's worthwhile pursuing. Task two is then making sure that your organization has the competencies, the skills, the resources, understanding the stakeholders, perhaps understanding the brand or corporate reputation, implications of that change. So you're ensuring that you've got a platform to effectively deliver that change. And then finally, task three is using traditional change models, traditional culture modules, to, and also KPIs and metrics to recommend a change program um, and how would you measure uh, using uh, usual metrics and KPIs and also how would you propose a timeline for the implementation of that change. So anybody that's done anything on management will be familiar with the change, organizational change program. This is about leading that change from the front as a senior marketer. Third module is managing business growth. And here, as I said earlier, we're going to be looking at uh, building a case for the growth within the organization. So you'll be looking at the opportunities and providing some rationale as to which opportunities should be pursued. So task one is focused on finding three possible growth options, analyzing the internal and external environment for the impact of each of those three, and then analyzing the competitive environment again for each of those, um, ensuring that you understand fully the customer behavior should you execute any one of your three business growth options. Task two, justify one of those. So effectively look at the, the cost benefit analysis and all the other variables that allow you to propose um, one of those growth options and show how it will be, uh, it will develop value for your organization. You need to look at your um, current capabilities as well to make sure that you can, uh, you can deliver that, that uh, growth option. And interestingly, you're also going to be asked to look at the partnerships to see who you need to partner with to, um, to ensure success. And then task three, the, the recommendation part, is market entry. So how are you now going to enter that new market? What's your strategy going to be? How do you need to perhaps modify your organizational structure? What internal communications are required? And once again, what metrics would you recommend to ensure success? And then finally, the, the last option, the alternative to the managing business growth is the consultancy project, which is where you're looking at a business issue, but you're also looking at your ability to develop relationships uh, between yourself and your client organization. So task one is very much focused on that relationships. You, you know, you need to look at things like the importance of your personal relationship and personal reputation as a consultant and that you're being asked to demonstrate your understanding of that. What skills and competencies do you need to be an effective consultant? And how important and how do you ensure your effectiveness as a networker? And you're also looking at the, the stages in relationship building as well. So that's task one. Task two then is looking at the um, the initial impact, really, of a, of a proposal for a possible project for a client. So you'd be looking at things like the environmental factors that would uh, influence the client in executing your proposal. You'd be looking at the resources and capabilities and culture and leadership that your proposed project would have on, on this organization. And then looking at perhaps some of the actions that are required to change the company so that your proposal would be effectively um, engaged with, within the organization, bearing in mind that you're an outsider as a consultant. You'd be looking at things like the objectives and how to ensure that the message is communicated clearly within the, the client organization. And then finally, task three is build a project plan. So look at the scope of works, the resistance to change, the data, the systems, and everything that you need to do to ensure success, and indeed how do you evaluate success as well. So that's your four modules. Um, it's about researching, planning, implementing, and then reviewing each of those modules. You can see that every single module goes through the same process. They're 5,000 words. And the one thing I will say, they are not essays. These are business reports. And one of the biggest challenges that people that come to us from a degree or a university background is making that transition between an academic environment where you write an essay or, some, or a paper and a business project and a business proposal. And so um, we, we obviously your study center will help you 
make that transition to the style of, of presentation. So how can you study? Well, various, various uh, people offer various methods. You might find a study centre that offers you an evening class, maybe you know, two or three hours every week for a 12-week term, or a 12-week module, and then move on to the next one. Um, I have to be honest with you, this type of level doesn't lend itself to an evening class, because evening classes are very much about imparting information. Um, yes, there are some discussions that take place, but there's, it's hard to link one evening class to the next evening class and ensure continuity of the message. Um, and, and for that reason, actually, that, that, that we don't offer this evening class mode of study for this particular program. The best one is intensive one or two day workshops. They're a business environment. You're engaging with other people on the program. Um, you're able to share ideas. You learn as much from other people as you do from the, the trainer. And actually, the, in this type of environment, the trainer is not so much of a trainer. They're more as a facilitator of discussions, bearing in mind that you're expected to already have knowledge of the models and theories anyway. So it's the application of those models and theories that these workshops cover. These may be supplemented by webinars, such as this one, and there may also be some e-learning or online um, distance learning uh, material for you to, to refer to, but that is going to be the models and theories and processes. It's not going to be something that's unique for your particular projects. So obviously, if you put all those together, then you're going to have a blended learning option, and really, that's the way I, I believe you should be looking now, for, certainly for this Level 7 program. So if you're thinking about study this, and I'm hopefully you're, you know, you're excited about these, then you know, what should you be asking your study centre? Well, the first thing you've got to ask them is obviously answers to those questions. How do they offer, what modes of uh, study do they offer? Evening classes, intensive and so on, the things that I've just spoken about. But in addition, you might be interested to know maybe how often are these workshops going to take place? Is it going to be one every month, one every quarter, uh, maybe one every six months, bearing in mind that the cycle time of a of a module is roughly six months. So you might be having a kickoff session at the beginning and then maybe one intensive two day workshop sort of part way through that six month cycle. Also, very importantly, ask them what support you're going to get. Do you have a support tutor that's available to answer questions? And how are those questions answered via a learning management system, phone calls, emails, or even face to face discussions? What online resources are going to be given to you? what is also the quality of the trainers. This, this level of qualification requires a very experienced trainer, somebody that's already operated at this level. It's not about an academic that understands your theory. This is about an application, a practical knowledge of marketing at a strategic level. And it's very important that you identify the trainers that you're going to get and they're capable of delivering that level of advice. Obviously, you're going to be submitting your, your drafts, sorry, your um, assignments um, via your, your study centre, and you ideally will have your submissions reviewed prior to formal submission. So you should be asking your study centre how they're going to review your drafts, what support do you get, and you know, what's the turnaround time for your, the submission of your drafts. And then lastly, I think it's important to ask them, what about slippage? You know, we're all busy people. What happens if you, you slip? Maybe one module has to be picked up again six months later. How do they allow you to do that? What, what time is given to you? So think about the slippage as well. Okay, so in terms of dates, you know, if you're excited to get started, and hopefully you are, then um, the CIM has certain registration dates. The next reg registration date for for us personally is by the 20th of September. Um, and if you're looking to submit an assignment to the CIM, then you need to make sure that you're both a member and you have registered for the particular module that you're looking to, to have assessed by the 1st of November. So really the 1st of no November is your, your, you know, your key date. You need to make sure you get that. And if you're looking to, to get on a, a program with a particular study center, then make sure you find out what their registration deadline is for that as well. Okay, so what are your next steps? Well, check 
obviously that this is the right level for you and maybe you know, talk to the, a few study centers but you know ring them and say this is what your experience is i'm sure that they um would be only too pleased to discuss you know with you it's not really about looking at your cv it's about understanding your experience understanding your aspirations and understanding what uh, uh, exposure to strategic marketing you've had you might also want to take the online diagnostic tool that the cim has we also by the way have one on our website it's a little bit shorter uh, it asks you less questions but they the diagnostic test is looking to test your knowledge whereas uh, the one that we have actually looks to to understand your experience um, make sure you've got a, a set of questions for your possible study centers and then contact them one by one and, and maybe rank them um, hopefully price isn't the most important thing for you, uh, you know, there are a variance in price um, just consider the value rather than the price. As marketers, we all understand the importance of value, and I would counsel you to look at the value rather than the lowest price. You can obviously use the Sound Study Center Finder to, to find alternative um, study centers for you that could offer this. Then you sign up, register the member, and then one by one, when you're ready to uh, um, submit your assignments, bearing in mind the, the next date is the 1st of November, set uh, register for the particular assignment you're looking to study. Okay, so it's over to you. I, um, I'm not sure if we can, um, let me just see if I can get to the questions. Does anybody yeah, have thank you, Martin. Um, I don't know if you can hear us. We had a few technical problems, everybody, so we do apologize for that, because I appreciate there was a time where things dropped out. Can you hear us now? I don't know whether that's gonna happen because there was a bit of a challenge. So uh, I'm just gonna look through some of the questions that have been asked. Uh, no color legend for the countries. Okay, um, it was more the the question was asked from um, to me, Leo, that um, about the 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 colors and and, and where the uh, CIM uh, qualifications are recognised. I think it depends on the country by country. Um, if you think about the global organisations that exist, then whether or not um, whether or not you know the, the qualification is. is recognized by the, the government is a different question to whether or not organizations recognize it. And I, I'm very, very certain that any country that's got a global organization, the, the, the company will recognize it. Um, okay, so the other question I've got is, can I just study one single module or do I have to study all three? Really good point. Yes, you can take one single module. It's actually called an award. And there are a number of people, especially for example, consultants that just want to take that one award and have some form of formal qualification for that single award. Um, next question I've got here is, uh, do we work on the assignments as a team or as individuals? Very good question. So as a team, you will discuss how generically the, um, the knowledge can be applied within a business environment. And that takes place during the workshop. That's the way the workshops are run. But then your actual project your actual assignment is done as an individual, and it's done as an individual with the support of your tutor. So the next question I've got is, can I advise on the entry level requirements for the level seven? Okay, what are the steps I need to apply for a non, from a non-member perspective? So the, um, the entry level, as I said, it's, um, it's either a degree or a master's degree in marketing, but more importantly, it's the experience that you have. So it's quite hard to say specifically, if you tick this box, you allowed entry onto it. It's more of a, a question of, have you got the experience and have you got the exposure to the strategic um, aspects of your organization that would allow you to learn and develop and obviously write your assessments based on that level of exposure? Okay, the questions are coming in thick and fast now, so let me uh, go to the next one. Um, and how do you need to apply? So that was the other part of that question. How do I need to apply from a non member perspective? You, you do that firstly by contacting at your possible study center, and then once you're enrolled with a study center, they will guide you through the steps, making sure that you do sign up with the CIM. You sign up your study center first, and then the CIM. You don't do it the other way around. Okay, so your, your, your study center is your first port of call for becoming a member and then enrolling onto particular modules. Uh, okay, next question is, are the modules exams or assignment based? Every module is assignment based, there are no exams. Simple as that, it, there's no exams at this level. It's all about projects, 5,000 word projects. 
uh, do I have to be enrolled with the study centre to study this? There was, uh, there was uh, the question, sorry, do I have to be enrolled with the study centre to study this qualification? Is there an option for self-study? Yes, there's an option for self-study, but it's still done via a study centre. That study centre will offer you all the materials and all the support to study for it remotely, um, but you still should attend the workshops. They, you know, they will always put on workshops. In actual fact, it's fundamental really that they ha you have access to those workshops. That's part of the agreement that study centres have with the CIM that workshops are available. Um, but yeah, if you want to study, if you want to do the majority of your work remotely, that's fine. But you can't go direct to the CIM awarding body and um, ask to be a student without having a study centre uh, assigned to you. Can I take a break midway through? Yes, I think I've answered that question already. You can, you can take a break. You discuss that with your study centre and um, I'm sure that they will accommodate that. We certainly accommodate that at the Professional Academy. Okay, can the marketing leadership programme be taken by persons outside of the UK who intend to travel intermittently to have one-to-one -one engagements? That's an interesting question. Um, if you're going to be effective, then you're going to be studying it in the UK it just so happens that you happen to live outside of the UK. So I may get a different answer from the CIM, but as far as I'm concerned, the answer to that one is yes, you can, because you will be effectively a UK-based student. And lastly, how many years experience do I need to study the, the, um, the qualification? This is a tough one, it, because you could have lots and lots of experience, but not had the exposure to the strategic uh, aspects of marketing. So I would say a minimum of five, at a senior level, but if you've had two years and you've come straight in with your um, degree from you know Yale University or somewhere like that, or your master's degree in marketing, and you've come straight in at the top level, then you you may well have the experience in a couple of years. So it does depend on the type of experience more than the uh, the number of years. Okay, so that is everything. I don't think there are any more questions. I hope that today has been worthwhile to you. Um, it's nice to see that uh, everybody stayed online as well, apart from me dropping out, which I do apologize for. Um, contact details are on that last stage, that, that last slide as well for the, um, the CIM. And obviously, I'm sure you can track me down via the, the usual social media if you want to talk to me personally. Um, I've enjoyed today and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it too. So thank you very much indeed.